Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome to my latest unboxing video. We just had this mystery package arrive from Amazon. Let's open it up and see what we get. Oh boy, it's the MGM I always wanted. Yeah, you've probably seen in the entertainment news recently the reports of Amazon potentially buying movie studio MGM for the princely sum of $9 billion. This has been reported by a variety of outlets, including Variety, which is significant as they are quite a reputable source. Obviously, this is no surefire report at this stage, but it's likely that these talks are happening. The news that MGM is shopping around for a buyer is nothing new. They'd previously been linked with Apple, but these most recent reports sound like they might actually have a really good chance of coming to fruition, and as MGM GM hold a huge stake in the rights of the James Bond film series, it means that 007 may well have new superiors to report to very soon. Now, a disclaimer, and I say this every time these kinds of news articles come up, like, I'm not a business insider or an analyst or anything like that, I'm just a Bond fan and I'm reacting to this news from that perspective. All I can really do as a Bond fan is speculate on how these reports, if they come to fruition, could affect my favourite film series. And while it's obviously very easy to make jokes about the potential of James Bond being owned by infinitely rich, slightly unnerving bald man Jeff Bezos, the potential of such a buyout is actually one that I'm quite open to from a, from a fan perspective. Honestly, MGM have been in financial difficulties for so long that I remember, like, particularly pre-Skyfall, I remember there being a lot of reports about whether or not they would even be able to finance the damn film. Bankruptcy and legal challenges seem to forever plight 007's output, so the idea that the series could be owned by one of the most wealthy companies on the planet, well, all of that funding for Bond 26 doesn't seem so hard to scrape together. I'm the money. Every penny of it. Obviously, there's a lot to speculate on as to what this would mean for the potential future theatrical distributions of future Bond films. Personally, I think it's a bit of a knee-jerk reaction to think that this buyout would mean that every Bond film would be premiering first on, like, Amazon Prime and all the old films would be locked behind some kind of subscription wall. It's been in the news that Amazon has been looking to buy movie theatres, which kind of implies that they have some vested interest in the space, and buying MGM with its James Bond and its menagerie of other properties too, I'm talking Rocky, Robocop, Pink Panther, it's it'd be in a pretty good place to start making and releasing reboots and sequels to all of those things. And I think that the pandemic has kind of shown that the big studios don't get the same kinds of big bucks that they get from releasing these huge movies theatrically as they do from releasing them first on streaming. Even when charging a premium price for home viewing, there is just something, like, about people, you know, getting their coats on, the shoes on, going out and going and experiencing a film in a theatrical space. People are social animals. It's not- we're not quite at the point of Wall-E yet where we're all just going to be plugged into, like, one screen that we're going to experience everything on. I think there's still some legs in theatrical distribution. So when it comes to something like No Time To Die, if Amazon were to just buy MGM outright before that film is released, I can't imagine then they'd say, right, scrap all of the theatrical plans, we're not premiering it at Wembley Arena after all, we're putting it straight on Prime. Seriously though, I think that the method of distribution may well end up changing, but I don't think they just scrap theatrical from the... Uh, from the plans completely, uh, particularly if the world is in a place where cinemas are open and people can go even at a reduced capacity, if the film could make, you know, I mean, what, anywhere between, uh, you know, half a billion dollars to a billion dollars by being released theatrically, I can't imagine Amazon necessarily turning their noses up at that kind of money, particularly if they're already spending nine billion dollars on acquiring MGM. I mean, if you think you get the film and then you release it, and if you can sort of, like, make back a ninth of that on one film, or somewhere near that, then yeah, why not? So I guess that's kind of me boiling down my two main concerns as a fan on hearing this news, namely the, uh, you know, the capacity and money to make future Bond films, and then how you release those Bond films. And honestly, I think Amazon's actually in a pretty good place for both of those things. I would assume that maybe after an initial, possibly shortened theatrical run, the latest Bond film would end up on Amazon Prime at a cost, before eventually maybe living on Prime? Uh, I would hazard a guess that maybe Maybe that would happen to the older Bond films too. I guess my biggest worry about such a buyout would be that our physical media releases for the Bond films might dry up. Now yes, I know I'm a dinosaur for still liking and buying physical Blu-rays, but I love my physical media collection, I love having my favourite films and Never Say Never Again on hand for whenever I fancy re-watching them, regardless of whatever subscription I may have to whatever service, and if Amazon want to drive people to their service, they might be more reluctant to put these things out on physical media. 
However, I do think that the Bond series is in a good place and has the kind of fandom where it would still be a bit of a moneymaker when it comes to physical media releases. Much like how, you know, the Marvel films and Star Wars are all on Disney+, Plus. if you have a subscription you can watch pretty much all of those films, I think, but they still keep putting them out on home media formats because they have a fan base that will buy them, and I think that Bond is probably in a similar situation. Obviously too, Amazon would be sharing the ownership of Bond with Dan Jack slash Eon, who would also have a pretty big say in how the series is handled, and I assume that they'd want to keep some of their traditions, but who knows, maybe new ownership would be a boost to their creative juices too. It feels like the timing would be just right too, what with No Time to Die supposedly being Craig's final Bond film. It'd be a good excuse for a completely fresh start with new partners. And I guess looking further off into the distance, uh, Amazon ownership may well open up new avenues to explore potential Bond spin-offs. If Amazon spend all that money on acquiring a whole load of assets, they're going to want to milk those assets to get that money back. Personally speaking, I'm not one of those fans who thinks that the Bond series should be Marvelized in a way. Like, I don't need to have my subset spin-off film series or a TV series or some kind of digital series all kind of feeding into this one main sort of shared universe. I mean, obviously, if they made a Felix Leiter series or a Money Penny series or whatever, I would obviously watch. And obviously, if you hired the right people, well, there's no reason why those things couldn't be great successes in their own right, but just from my perspective of where I am at the moment, and maybe it's quite pathetic of me to not really be asking for more than this, but as a Bond fan, all I really want is a new Bond film every two to three years, and maybe a game and a new book along with it. But in recent years, it feels like even asking for that has been too much. I just don't know if Bond makes sense as a big shared media universe. Like Marvel, I mean, so many companies have tried to do that Marvel thing, universe all tried to do it with the monsters and it just it always falls so flat and you can always just tell like okay they're trying to do the Marvel thing and the thing is with something like Marvel that kind of shared universe all of these different characters coming together like that's kind of built into just the, the, the very heart of the concept like since the comic book origins whereas Bond has often always been like one man and some recurring characters, but it's mainly just him going out on his mission and having these fabulous adventures. And the fact that it is always one man, it's 007, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know how interested I am in finding out what 004 gets up to. But interested or not, you know I would watch it and you know I would make a video series talking about it. <laughs> And again, that's not to say that these things wouldn't work if the right people were involved and if it had enough money put into it and enough care and attention. It's just that on a very conceptual level, Q the miniseries doesn't get me all that excited. So in summary, I guess that, uh, look, MGM is probably going to be bought out at some time. It's been very public at putting itself out there looking for a buyer. And, you know, Apple, uh, Netflix, Warner's Paramount, whoever it is that buys it, of all of those companies, Amazon does kind of make sense to me. And as I keep saying, look, I'm just talking about this from a perspective of a Bond fan who wants to see Bond films. And from that perspective, a company like Amazon buying it sounds pretty good. Let me know how you feel about this, though, in the comments section below. I've seen an awful lot of mixed reaction to this online, and I don't know if that's just from people who would be pushing back against any company buying MGM. I mean, I think it's fairly clear that MGM are going to be bought out at some point, and yeah, maybe this isn't the most ideal scenario for you, but I'm curious to know what people think about it. What you think about a shared Bond universe, what you think about all the Bond films being on Prime, what you think Amazon would do theatrically, or if they just try to, you know, get rid of that aspect of releasing completely, please do let me know in the comments section below. Also below, links to my usual social media pages, my Facebook page, my Twitter page, and my Patreon page for those of you who want to go one extra step in supporting this channel. And with all that being said, so long for now, Bond fans.